Craig Rucastle to the box office. Ever try to get tickets for that thing you really wanted to see? Tickets for this event are no longer available. And miss out? We all know who's to blame. Someone yeah, has to do something about these scalpers. Four tickets! Tickets! Ah, tickets. Ah, tickets. Yes. Here's what people think is happening. More tickets! Come on, give it to me! More tickets! But cheer up, emo kid. It's not as bad as it first seems. How'd you get into my room? Uh, don't worry about that. The point is, despite what you might read, scalping isn't really a big problem in Australia at all. But what about all those tickets on eBay? Yeah, don't get yourself just yet. eBay often takes the heat from fans and ticketing companies. The Big Day Out even tried to sue them in 2006. But even for massive events, the number of tickets on eBay isn't enough for people to miss out. The truth is, in Australia, scalping barely exists. Exactly, let's ban it. But that hasn't stopped some states from passing anti-scalping laws. In Victoria, it's illegal to make a profit reselling tickets for some major sporting events, like the Grand Final and Australian Open. Queensland's even stricter. It's illegal there to resell tickets for events at nine stadiums if you make more than a 10% profit. Similar legislation is expected in New South Wales. And there are regular calls for federal anti-scalping laws too. But elsewhere in the world, anti-scalping laws are going in one direction. <laughs> no, I mean the other direction. They're getting rid of anti-scalping laws. After finding they were almost impossible to enforce in the internet age and wasted police resources, some research even suggests that anti-scalping laws led to higher ticket prices. See, we are the good guys. How did you get into my Don't room? Don't worry about that. So if it's not the scalpers, who is doing the price gouging? The real scalpers are the big companies that dominate our ticketing industry. Remember when you got that ticket online from Ticketek? Yes. And the ticket price said 130 bucks. But then there was that service delivery fee. No matter whether you had your ticket sent to you, got it over the phone, picked it up at the box office, uh. Or if you print it out yourself. Oh, come on. But that's just Ticket Tech. Ticketmaster wouldn't invent different charges for different modes of delivery. No, they come up with one flat, unreasonable fee across all modes of delivery, and that's per ticket. And there's also an up to 2.3% credit card surcharge. And there's no other way to play online. Shut up! Hey, I haven't finished yet. They're just the fees we know about. There's also a hidden charge to the venue per ticket of between 2 and 15%. And that's not the only way they shaft you. Like, if you get given gift vouchers for tickets, not only do you get all of those fees, but if you want to actually use those tickets, you have to turn up to their office in person, which is standard practice if it's like the 1950s or something. Eee. And the internet hasn't been invented yet. You do what? So given all of that, do we want new service providers? Yes! Good bloody luck with that, because Ticketek and Ticketmaster control 73% of the industry. It's a virtual duopoly, and it's more than that for big events. In 2011, Ticketek was fined $2.5 million for anti-competitive practices directed against the ticket discounter, Last Ticks. For a big business like Ticketek that makes a $50 million profit, that's just an inconvenience fee. aren't buying the tickets, who are they selling out to so quickly? Let's go back to that 40,000 seat concert that sold out in two minutes. That doesn't mean 40,000 tickets went on sale. The best tickets probably never went on sale to the general public. They're reserved for sponsors, people buying travel packages and VIPs. Is he now seat? Sophie and Vanessa? No, this... Now. Seriously? Yeah. Come on, buddy. I'm thinking this is shy. Oh, how embarrassing for him. What a joke. The industry is very secretive about how their tickets are allocated. But we do know at one Taylor Swift concert, only 1,600 of the 15,000 tickets were available to the general public. The rest went to fan clubs, American Express credit card holders, sponsors and others. And that could even be happening at good concerts. So a lot of the tickets never go near here in the first place. And the rest sell like this. Improvements in technology, 
mean that between 15 and 20,000 people can be on the Ticketex site at the same time, buying between one and three tickets each. That means a 60,000 ticket event can sell out almost instantly. So, so what, what can, can I, I do? do? Well, if you do decide to buy on-sold tickets on eBay or Gumtree, just make sure they don't breach anti-scalping legislation. Be extra careful buying anything in Victoria or Queensland. Some big sporting events like the Australian Rugby and the Ashes have retrospectively cancelled resold tickets, so it's best to check with them first. Check the original website's terms and conditions. Check the seller's feedback. Pay via PayPal and send it via registered post. That way you're doubly protected if anything goes wrong. As if I'm going to do that. Mm. That way everyone can be happy. 